you can just uh, extend the chat box. See, we have just started discussing about the categories of Java classes. Uh, there are I mean, Java classes are categorized into five types with respect to with respect to uh, Spring framework. Right. So we have just understood about what is Java Bean class. Today we will be understanding about the Kojo class and Koji. Koji is an interface. Uh, Bean class or component class. So after understanding all this pro, all these four categories, we will be understanding what is a Spring Bean. So the Spring Bean will make a lot of sense. And also we have we will be using a lot in the Spring projects a lot of uh, classes on top of Java Bean, Kojo, Koji Bean classes. This terminology will be we will be revisiting revisiting these classes and this terminology. We will come across these terminologies very often. So understanding these thing, these things are very imperative. So in order to give you a, a brief uh, recap about today's topic, we have just discussed about how what is the difference between a normal class. So this is what a normal class looks like. How to convert a normal class into Java Bean class? There are some rules, and we need to some follow some conventions, or we can say that we have to follow some standards, right? So the first start see uh, sorry to say this this is this is implements not extends because serializable is an interface so a class can implement an interface yes. the class you should ensure the developer has to ensure that the class is provided with public access modifier first rule and it cannot be abstract and final then all the member variables should be private. Second rule. Second convention. And we should have at least one no or constructor. Even though if the developer is place, placing any number of construct any number of constructors that is taking parameters, right? And it is also important to place at least one no or constructor. Okay. No or constructor is mandatory. And uh, and last rule is each and every property, each and every property should have one getter method and one setter method and it should be specified with public access modifier to set and get values. Right? This is going to make a typical Java bean class. Right? So what is the purpose of Java bean class? It is, act, is going to act like a data carrier from one project to another project or from one class to another class in a same project. Right, so we have seen some advantages. Advantages are like reusability, it acts like a data carrier, and things like this. And we have also discussed about you know, so these are advantages and disadvantages are like uh, there are two disadvantages, and these disadvantages are completely negligible in comparison with the advantages. Right? Advantages weights a lot, a lot of weightage is there for advantages when compared to disadvantages. You can ignore these disadvantages, but if you come across any questions like what are the disadvantages of uh, a developing a class as as Java Bean class, you can say this boilerplate code and the class are mutable class. Mutable. Right? Now we have also seen about some examples, right? But today we are we are going to discuss. See, uh, I can I can transfer data. The question will be like, would I really need to use uh, the Java Bean class to tra to as a, as a medium for carrying the data. Should I really need to use the Java Bean class as a medium to carry data? What I said, Java Bean class is going to act like a data carrier. Should I really need to use a Java Bean class? I can, I can even uh, achieve this by using a normal class. Right? Because uh, you can also ask me, right? why you should waste a separate file by declaring a class as Java Bean class? which is going to act as a data carrier. Instead of uh, creating a Java Bean class, I can just transfer the data directly. I can do that as well. I can do it like that as well. But what are the, what is the specific advantages that I have with Java Bean class? If you understand this part, then the things will become very easy. Okay? Why one should use Java Bean class as a data carrier? Why not the ordinary class? Why it should be always Java Bean class? Right? This understanding is very important. 
and in this understanding you, are, you will also understand about some internal concepts that is hidden in the that is hidden in the java programming language shall we start type s in the chat box if the introduction is clear come on come on i want uh, yes because then only i will understand if you are for with me that's why i'm asking you okay table, okay don't mind now okay so this is my question my question is very clear is it really necessary necessary to use java in class as a data carrier java bean class okay data carrier i can achieve this by just by using an ordinary class just by using a normal class but what are the what is the specific advantages that that the java bin class is having and right? we will understand this right so in order to understand this let me uh, write a small program let me write the program here see you are going to give an interview just an imagination you are going to give an interview right so you know before giving an interview like you usually get interview calls but what is the foundation uh, you need to apply for the job you need to apply your uh, resume or you need to give your give about the candidate information in the naukari website or any job searching websites right so these details will be collected by the respective companies and you get a call from them right so let us uh, use the same uh, concept in the form of classes facing java classes let us say that i have a class let's keep the class name as company please pay some attention i have a typical class the name of the class is company inside this class i have a method public uh, static void and uh, job the name of the method is job seeker i have a, i have a class and i have a method inside the class and uh, it is declared with the name job seeker right this job seeker method is going to accept uh, some arguments what are the arguments you want to apply for a job name is mandatory your name is candidate name should be mandatory right to name secondly uh, your location is mandatory name location and uh, your phone number right phone number can be represented in the form of let me use long because it cannot hold sometimes the 10 decimal values phone number right and it will ask you for the skill set right mandatory skill set one skill uh, set uh, two I mean, uh, string skill set one string skill set two string skill set three if you see the skill set uh, so the skill sets are at least you need to fill one skill set and the remaining skill sets can be optional because uh, sometimes we may be acquiring only one skill we may we may not be having be having the knowledge of multiple skills right this can be optional one thing can be mandatory compulsory and the remaining things can be optional right some people may fill this some people may not fill this the total how many properties we have declared name uh, location phone number uh, totally six properties let me take one more property one more property is right ring education See, a company class inside the company class i have taken a method and this method is accepting seven arguments one is name second one is location phone number skill set one skill set two skill set three and education just listen here so when this method is invoked this method is performing some operations in let us say that some kind of business logic is written inside this method after evaluation this method is going to display 
after evaluating uh, after evaluating the business logic the method is going to display what a simple set statement what is it eligible or not eligible depends upon the logic that the that is that the data is getting encoded it's very simple you give some data this get data will be evaluated using this business logic right and after evaluation the business business logic is going to give outputs in the form of eligibility so you can this candidate can be eligible or this candidate cannot be is not eligible for to give an interview a simple logic invoke this method this method is going to perform some operations and uh, it is going to display the details in the console whether you are eligible or not eligible as simple as that right so this is the company class right let me take a driver class driver class is the main class public class driver the driver class is where you where you can invoke this method right so driver class should have main method public static void main string array arguments now listen now we are going to I mean, so how this is going to make a lot of sense see if, if i want to pass data if i want to send data directly to the class i'm not using any java bin i mean any java bin class i'm just using this class right? with the help of main class i'm just trying to pass data i'm just trying to pass the information right what is the typical way to pass information create object for the class company first create the object for the class company any any object any uh, user defined name object equal to new object is created object is created object is created and the reference variable for this object is what what obj object object right since there are no variables no instance variables nothing nothing will be placed inside this object it is a dummy object empty object because we haven't defined any instant variables right now see now see the next line if i want to transfer data to this method if i want to invoke this method i need to transfer some data from the main method i will have to transfer data what data i will be transferring i want to I just want to invoke that method to invoke that method i need to use the reference variable of the object which is object itself object dot job seeker is the method name okay i need to pass seven values okay i can pass seven values no issues passing the seven values is not a big deal but i need to follow the order i need to remember the order first i need to pass name i cannot uh what we call it as if i which if i forgot the order instead of in the place of name location might be declaring my uh what we call it as my address my address thing in place of phone number like i may be declaring my skill set so remembering this order is very very important it is going to create a lot of confusion right seven properties a method has seven properties so you need to remember each and every property and its place value right firstly i need to use name is i should be using your name itself the state that name is your ram right it is accepting string location it is expecting location if i forgot the order instead of location what if i place your skill set the whole values i mean uh, the data is going to get corrupted right it is not a meaningful data so i need to remember the order sometimes what happens you know okay you you manage to remember the remember the order of the data okay? but you don't have some values for example you are only expert in java is asking for three skill sets skill set two skill set three right you know in these places you need to pass dummy values it, it, it cannot be left to blank right it is not like okay i i don't have any skill set apart from java i can leave this uh, property you cannot do that because it will uh, this particular line will be broken this particular method if you are invoking this method it is mandatory to pass seven parameters how many parameters are there one two three 
four, five, six, seven. Whatever, if you know or if you don't know skill set, like if you are good at one skill set, no, no issues. But still, you are you you are compelled to pass the remaining two skill sets. At least you should pass dummy values. Right? That is what the T set is a advantage here. So trying to pass data directly without using Java Bean class. This is the problem that you are going to face. The problem number one. So you are going to face how many problems? Let us uh, write down the problems. There are some problems. Can you prefer not using the Java Bean class as the data carrier? What are the problems? First, if you, are trying, if you are directly trying to pass the data by invoking the method, we invoking the method that is having the business logic. First thing, and before even that, it is not a good practice. Programming practice to prepare a method that is accepting more than three parameters. But if any application, application if they are developing any method. They will ensure that the number of parameters that any method is accepting is reduced as less as possible. You don't see any methods that is taking parameters more than three. It is not a good program. Programming from the programming point of view, it is a, it is a compiler is not going to throw any errors. But it is not a good programming practice. Why it is not a good programming practice? Because you will face the following consequences. Following consequences. The number one is. You will have to remember the parameter order. Number one problem. Number two problem is what? You will be forced to pass at least a dummy value. You, you find any optional parameter. At least you should pass dummy value, right? So uh, invoking the method could be very difficult if you understand this uh, disadvantages. Like right? these disadvantages can be overcome by using Java Bean class. How is it possible to overcome these disadvantages by using Java Bean class? I will explain you now. Right? Let me copy and uh, copy the same thing. instead of copying this so let me uh, go here what i am going to do i am going to create a java bean class java bean class. inside the java bean class we know the rules I, I, I don't think i need to repeat the rules we have what a public class so i am taking the name of the class as candidate Candidate information. So inside this candidate information, the properties, the parameters that I am passing here, right, can be taken as a properties here. Very simple. The parameters that I am passing in this method. There are seven parameters that I am passing in this method, right? Instead of passing it inside the method directly, I can write down those parameters in the java bin class what are the seven parameters so let me just say that uh, uh, private uh, name location phone number things like that private bin name and uh, just assume that i have i am passing seven parameters right Right. For all the seven parameters, I will be, I mean, uh, default constructor is required public uh, candidate information information 
This is a default constructor. At last, getters and setters for each and every property. So there will be what? Seven getters because we have seven properties, isn't it? And seven setters. So Java bean class is ready. Java bean class is ready. So this bean class is going to act as a data carrier. Now see something interesting will happen here. The problem, these two problems can be eliminated now. These two disadvantages can be eliminated by using the Java bean class. Right? So let me take the name, uh, let me take this class company. Class company. So we have placed what method? We have placed a method. Name of the method is what? Public static void job seeker method. Now look at the advantages. Public static void job seeker method. So Previously, I have passed uh, seven parameters individually, but with the help of Java bean class, I am going to collectively pass these seven parameters. Collectively, I am going to pass. So these parameters are passed individually. So seven, seven names I have given, seven identifiers I have given, name, location, phone number, seven identifiers. So there are seven parameters. Now these seven parameters can be passed as a, as a single entity. A single object. So inside here, I'm going to use a simple class name, candidate information. Candidate information. That's it. So name of the class, the Java bean class name, I'm using it here. It is, uh, let me declare a variable like CI, candidate information. Candidate information. Right, it is going to have some business logic internally. Business logic. So after the evaluation of the business logic, uh, the something will be displayed in the console. The information is going to be like what eligible or not eligible. The same method name, I'm using the same method name, just try to understand, I'm using the same method name, right? But instead of passing seven parameters separately, I have collected all the parameters in the form of Java bean class, because we have just created Java bean class, and inside this bean class, I have collectively placed all the parameters, right? I am using this class name as a single entity right so this this candidate information has seven properties or seven parameters as simple as that right what difference that is going to make you will understand now. so this is going to eliminate these two disadvantages that we have just faced remembering the order placing the w values that will be eliminated by this particular class so since it is using a java pin class as a parameter directly so class has been we have uh, prepared the class and we need to prepare the driver class driver class is what public class See, these things will look little difficult but once you practice these things it is going to be very easy and uh, developing spring boot application will becomes very much easy so they are uh, once we get into the application development so uh, if you want to understand the development this understanding is necessary so we need to do a lot of practice just type the program and uh, try to execute it from your side you will understand when i am teaching it it may look it may sound little difficult because you are trying to listen it right but when you try to practice it this will make a lot of sense please do that after the class the public class driver So the driver class public static name 
the ring array also. So I have a driver class. Now what I'm going to do, see, now see, uh, I have a bean class, Java bean class. So bean class is declared by the name of uh, candidate information. Create an object for candidate information, first of all. Candidate information, e CI object. equal to new candidate information so candidate information you have written your candidate information now see now see now something is going to happen so object has been created right so how does the object looks like as soon as after the statement, how the object is going to look like? Let me draw the object here. This is the object, right? And the reference variable of this object is what? EI object. Object. A object. And how many properties I have for this particular class? How many instant variables I have? Instant variables in the sense, the properties, parameters, seven, seven parameters. So, firstly, the default value will be assigned to all these seven parameters. Right? We have uh, parameters like what? Uh, name, location, phone number, skill set one, skill set two, skill set three, education. Write that here. Name, location, phone number, skill set one, skill set two, skill set three. The last one is what? Education. So default values will be assigned mostly. So for the name, it's the string type, so null. Location string type, so default value is null. Phone number long type, so default value is what zero. Skill set one string null. As soon as the object is created, uh, the default values will be assigned for all the parameters. It's the complete core Java concept. Null. This thing has happened because of this line. This thing has happened, right? Now I want to assign values for for these uh, seven parameters, right? So now do I want to follow the order? So the previous disadvantage is I need to remember the parameter order. If I am not using Java Bean class. I need to re remember the parameter order for the particular method. Because I need to transfer data, I cannot transfer data randomly, I need to follow the order. That is the case, that is the disadvantage case. In this case, when I need to follow any order to set data, I can directly use setters, right? I can, I can uh, pass the values according to my wish, right? J dot object dot set name, or I can directly first set location, location is equal to Bangalore. Right. Likewise, I do not have to worry about the order. I can follow my own sequence. Location. So secondly, I can use name. Thirdly, I can use what phone number. So I have only one skill. So I am let me use skill set one. Only one skill set I have. So name I can place Madhu. Uh, phone number I can place uh, any random number. Right, skill set one. If I am not assigning values uh, to any any other parameters, I am not forced to assign the assign the default values. Default values are already existed, isn't it? Right. Only these four values will get replaced here. So name will be null will be replaced by Madhu. Uh, on the location, 
Bangalore will get replaced, right? So these are the things that are going to get replaced. Phone number and the skill set one. The null value is just getting replaced. Am I posted to follow the order? Eliminated. I am posted to seconds. Look at the second disadvantage. Am I posted to pass a dummy value? Not necessary. If not passing any value, default values will be taken. It is taken care by the program itself. I mean, it is taken care by the Java bin class itself. Right? So null is getting replaced with what? Madhu. Location is getting replaced with Bangalore. Bangalore and uh, phone number 12345. Any random number skill set one. Did I use Bangalore here? Not Bangalore, Java. Skill set one is Java. So four values are we place, and uh, I am not. It is as a developer, you know, or you know, as a what we call it as the customer, the person who is trying to input this data is not forced to enter any dummy values. Dummy values are taken care by the object itself. By default, by default, the default values are going to get considered, right? And this object will be, so now these are the values that is available in, these are the data that is available in this object, right? We want to call that method. What is the method here? Job seeker method. This job seeker method is placed inside where company. So create a class uh, object for the company. Company com equal to new company. Invoke that object. Call that object. Com dot name of the object is what? Job seeker. Job seeker is expecting candidate information object. Job seeker, which is accepting candidate information object, which is this object. This object that is accepting is a token. Pass this object. As simple as that. The confusion pass this object. Okay. This all the data will be transferred here. And it will perform some business things. Right? Internally it will use uh, getters. Getters to press the data because uh, this all the data is uh, just uh, Bind it into a single entity. So internally it use getter to fetch each an individual data. But the question is, these things are eliminated. These uh, disadvantages are taken care of. Parameter order is, uh, we, we are not supposed to follow the parameter order. We are also not supposed to force it to follow, I mean, pass any dummy value. Dummy value is taken care by the object itself. This is why we are, we are going for Java bean class. It's the reason why. We are appointing a Java bean class to act as a data carrier. Right? This is one, this is one person data. By using the Java bean class, I can I can create many number of objects and, and I can transfer different uh, set of values in, in any order. Right? So now you tell me uh, Java, using Java bean class to uh, to as a data carrier is a good thing or not, is an advantage or not. If you are not using this, then these are the things, these are the disadvantages that we are going to place and the process is going to be very difficult. Order is mandatory. Dummy values, you cannot uh, leave any, you cannot left out any parameters. So you need to take care of all the parameters. Even though you are processing the skills or you are not processing the skill set, at least you need to pass some dummy value. Compulsion is there. Here yeah, the compulsion is not there. If you are not passing, by default, these values are considered. Right? So, I can, uh, we can conclude this now. We can conclude Java bin class. After this conclusion, let's talk about Pojo class. Advantages of Java bin class as a data carrier first one is reusability should always be the top the 
developer does not have to remember order third one if developer is not forced to pass any dummy values to the information or data related to the parameter is not available available fourth one it is going to just act like a data carrier without any business logic inside just data carrier no business logic inside are only constructors parameters getters and setters that is why in every spring boot application or any spring spring application we are considering the java bean class as a data carrier hope this is making some sense just type s in the chat box so that we can proceed to what is pojo class and uh, we'll understand what is uh, og interface if you have understood so far please respond something in the chat box Hello. So, sounds good. Let me save this and we will understand something about Pojo class. You might have come across this Pojo class, Pojo class word very often. Today I will clarify you what is a Pojo class. What it has to do with this Spring project. Class for me. Okay, so this is the theory part, right? Let me let us run this once again for the better understanding. Uh, see, screen is visible, I think. See, same thing, same thing I, am, I have taken. Uh, name location one skill set one skill set two skill set three in this case i have taken salary right if i am not creating java bean class not creating java bean class in the main method so i need to invoke right i need to invoke i need to create object for the class so company class so object has been created for the company class now so see object dot details I need to pass all the values in the same order. The name, location one, skill set one, skill set two, skill set three, salary. Right? If I miss the order, what happens? If I miss the order, see what, what is going to happen. Instead of name, if I am giving it a Bangalore, right? It will be meaningless, isn't it? So remembering order is very important. Firstly, right? And uh, secondly is I need to at least pass a dummy value. Let me make this really quick. Name location one, three skill sets out. Okay. Uh, ROM. Good. Uh, Java. Spring. So ROM, ROM is having uh, only two skills, Java and Spring. We, he does not is not possessing any third skill set right in this case he has to pass dummy value dummy value can be anything let us pass null right he is supposed to pass this if he is not passing this 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 method calling will be incomplete this method call will be broken it is asking you it is forcing you to please pass anything this method parameters the caller method is will accept only Seven arguments. You have just passed four arguments. It is not acceptable. And the last thing is salary part. This particular salary. So order we have to maintain order. We have to right? so if I run this, we get output. 
if I miss anything, if I miss any order, right, the output will be meaningless and we cannot even uh, execute this, right? This is how uh, it is. But if I using the Java bean, the Java bean candidate, same parameters I am taking in the form of uh, private. We copy this and paste. Private string name. Private string location one. Fill one. Private string or skill to private string skill three private long salary the name is missing private name. So I have taken all the properties inside a POJO class. I am developing a not POJO class, Java Bean class. Java Bean class. When you can call this as a POJO class, no problem, but uh, you need to understand something more about POJO class. Java Bean class. So a default constructor is mandatory. Constructor default constructor, no or constructor. And setters and getters. Let me generate that real quick. So POJO class is generated. This is this is going to act as a data carrier. Copy this. Go there. First create object for POJO class. AC equal to new our bean candidate. Right? Remove this. So I can set data only for the things that I have, only for the information that I have, I can set data. I do not have to pass the, when you do, I do not have to remember the order also. First I can pass location also, no problem. Set location. Set location. Anything. Right? If I have only two information, set location, three information, set location, set name, I am not following the order. Name is wrong. Skill set. I have only one skill set. Just an assumption. Set. Set skill two. Skill two. Uh, Java. I don't have remaining information. By default, it is going to be what null, right? I am passing. I am passing this JC object to invoke this method to call this method. Let me remove this. Instead of uh, passing seven parameters, I am just passing a single parameter in the form of Java Bean class. What is the class name? Java Bean candidate. AC. Single Bean class I am using. Right? Inside this, I can get the values that has been set by the developer. So get salary. I can get all the values that, I, that has been Get name. This is uh, this is this is uh, this is the reason behind the setters. So when the object is transferred to get that op to get each and every individual entity information, we get that information and by using the setters. That's why by using the getters. Sorry. Make this really quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Set 3. Set 2. Set 
accepto salary has been used for two times what we are missing name salary skills skill set one okay right so i have passed three uh, three 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 data in different order I, I do not have to remember the order right so if i just run this no errors so let me call this object pass uh, object or details it is pass the jc object see zero from so this uh, default value is, is, is also taken care right developer is not supposed to pass this default value default values are taken care by the bean class itself making sense this is the conclusion about java bean class now we will start discussing about the new topic what is the bojo class Bojo. Bojo is an acronym for uh, let me give you the explanation it is an acronym for play old java why it is called as plain old java object I can also say that Bojo is a class. Bojo is a Java class, and it is an it is an acronym for plain old Java object. You will use this. You will witness this word everywhere in the Spring Boot application. Everywhere in the Spring application, you will come across these words many times. Bojo, especially about the Bojo class. The Bojo class and the Java Bean class they look similar, but there is some little difference look at this old plain old java object why it is called a plain old java object for example uh, if you are meeting your friend this is a real time analogy if you are meeting your friend after after a long time let us say that you have just met your friend after five years five such five such long years five years if you find your friend uh, is uh, behaving like the same way you found him in uh, five years ago the behavior is not changed what you used to say is yeah, that uh, he is the same old friend okay. my friend uh, you can you will just uh, tell him tell like uh, hey, you are just like the same old friend no changes from your side no maturity things like that right? like that if you visit your school and uh, the school many schools get up, upgraded but some most of the schools are like the same old school, the old same old benches, old tables, right? This is how you represent. This is how you describe, right? When you find uh, something is not at all changing, you say that you use, usually use the same word, the same old things, right? For example, sometimes some people still use instead of WhatsApp, they still use uh, text messages, right? They don't, uh, they don't get upgrade. You don't find any upgrade. What you define, you define them as the same old person. No changes. Right? If something physically or if something in the world that is not at all getting changed at all, this not at all getting upgraded, we define them like uh, the same old things. No changes, no upgrades, right? Likewise, even the Java some class, which is following the same standard and it is not at all accepting any upgrades. We call those classes as plain old Java objects. Any Java class that is not at all getting upgraded, not at all following, not at all uh, implementing or extending any new APIs. We usually describe them as what? Plain old Java objects. Can you give me any real time example if you ask me? There are so many examples that I give. Before, under before even understanding this, I will help you to understand something. Right? What is that something? If you want to download Java, so this is the Java that is that has been. Uh, this is the Java JDK kit that is available in the Oracle website. This is JDK. 
Okay, please focus here. This is very very important. Okay, Java development, Java developing kit. Right? Java developing kit. Uh, it is uh, placed in the Oracle website. Oracle is maintained by Oracle Corporation. Java is maintained by Oracle Corporation, right? So you get, uh, you can download Java from Oracle websites. From website, you are trying to download the JDK. JDK is an acronym for Java Development Kit, right? So you are using Windows operating system. Using Windows operating system, and uh, you have just performed the downloading. It is getting downloaded. So your operating system. So my let us let's take my operating system. My operating system has been categorized or partitioned into Three drives. So let us say the two drives. I have only two drives: C drive and D drive. C drive, D drive. So JDK by default, whatever the things that you are downloading it from internet, by default it is going to get downloaded in the downloads folder. right downloads folder inside the downloads folder you will find what jdk java development kit software right so downloading is done as soon as you download it are you able to uh, write uh, the java program directly uh, by just uh, just by entering into the downloading folder no you need to perform the installation downloading part is done you need to perform the installation right so when you are performing the installation, this Java software will get installed by default in the C drive, right? So how it will get, how it will get installed? It, it will be get installed inside the program files. Right? Understand this? These things you will not find these things in the internet. Program files and the program files and there will be a separate folder called Java folder. These things happen internally, it will be taken care by the operating system and the Java. You do not have to specify it. If you want to install, you click next, 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 next. By default, it will be installed in the program files. Of course, you can change the location, but by default, it is going to happen like this, right? And again, inside Java, there will be two folders. One is uh, what? JDK. Second one is what? JRE. Right? So now, now see Java, JDK, JRE, program files, and two folders will be there, JDK, JRE. If you go inside JDK, there will be so many developing tools, like uh, some commands will be there, Java C command for compilation, you will find compilation commands, execution command, documentation command, all these commands will be inside the JDK folder. Java C command will be there and uh, another command uh, Java command for execution. Just remember these things. And if you go inside JRE, there will be a jar file called rt.jar file. Please remember this rt.jar file. Jar file. So why I am telling all this? This rt.jar file is going to have all the Java libraries, all the Java class libraries. Means the libraries that are used to develop any Java application, all the libraries are placed inside the rt.jar file. You can say that this has a direct relation, this concept has a direct relation with this rt.jar file. If you understand this, you will understand what is possible. You don't find these things in the internet. Rt.jar file. This jar file is going to have all the libraries that are related to Java. Some such libraries are you will find uh, like Java dot blank package, blank dot star. Collection library, Java dot, util dot, all the all the collection 
framework libraries right and uh, all the uh, like you know our dot io strings right so so many so many libraries will be there if i want to specifically say about this library the libraries will be in the form of dot class files so many dot class files will be there right in the jdk you get uh, i mean this is how the structure is going to be after downloading this is how the installation is going to be inside the rt.jar file you will find a lot of libraries like this java libraries java libraries that are required to develop java applications right so what pojo class says pojo class is a java class and it is an acronym for plain old java what does it really mean right that it really means let me write it down here it is a simple java class without any specialities without any special properties or without any specialities without any specialities secondly see now the now the point this this point you should remember it will be using only java libraries java libraries in the jdk software and it is not it will not use not it will not uh, it will be it will not be called as a pojo class then it uses any outside libraries third one the class has to extend or implement jdk i can say if the class ever has to extend any libraries extend any libraries which should be which should extend or implement only jdk libraries what does it really mean so let us uh, understand this it is everything is in the audit object so this is my simple class Hi team, welcome back. So what I was saying is, uh, if I if I have any class, for example, class student, my student class. So I can call this as a pojo class. When I can call this as a pojo class, this 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 can be called as a pojo class. If it is extending to any library, for example, if it is extending to thread class, thread is a library in Java dot lang package. If it is extending to the thread class library, it, is, it can be pojo class. Or if it is implementing runnable interface, it implements runnable interface. Where is this runnable interface is available? It is available in the JDK kit in rt.jar. It is a part of JDK, pojo class. Two examples, pojo class. When it is not called as a pojo class. For example, if it is, if it is uh, extending, It extends HTTP servlet. What the compiler will do? Servlet. Compiler will check if this HTTP servlet is available in JDK library or not. 
STK servlet is not the part of JDK or the Dodge R5. So this is not a Poja class. If you want to, so let me remove all this. I'll keep it very simple. I will make you to understand the form of cases. Class test. Class test. Right? It's a Poja class, yes, it's a Poja class. Why it is a Poja class? By default, any class is going to extend object class. Even though if you are placing it or if you are not placing it, every class will be extending object class, right? The object class is part of JDK, RT.jar. Right? So this is a Poja class. This is a Poja class. Second, second case. Class test, I mean, uh, class uh, student extends test. Now, this class is student is extending this test class. Poja class are not a Poja class. Poja class, why Poja class? Both are part of the same JDK kit, both are part of the same library, right? Both are developed in the same, same JDK, Poja class. Right now, class student, or let me say the class of energy extends. Since I am extending my time, I am just using extends keyword extends thread. Now this thread is also part of JDK library, rt.jar. Inside this rt.jar, you will find the thread, thread class, java.lang package. Right? Thread is a part of java.lang package. Java.lang package is a part of what? JDK library. Lang package. Lang API So this is also called as Poja class. Now here comes the interesting point. Same if it is using the same old old Java library, they call it as they call it as Poja class. If it is now if it is extending to it is trying to upgrade by using any other external library, we do not call it as Poja class. As simple as that. Class demo stands HTTP servlet. Okay. This HTTP servlet servlet. It's not part of JDK library. This is an external library, not part of Java library. Even though it, it is uh, defined in Java language, it is not part of Java library. It is an external library. You need to add this library in the form of jars. Right? So this is not a poster class. So this particular class is given by what? Servlet AP. Forget about what is Servlet AP. Just think that it is an external library. Servlet AP. Not part of you cannot find that API inside this uh, inside rd.jar. So this is not a what? This is not a Pojo. Likewise, we can keep uh, discussing like this. Discussion. This discussion is uh, not a debatable. It the discussion keeps extending. Right. So if it is a part of our current current class or current JDK, it is a Bojo class. If we are using an extension keyword, but trying to extend any external APIs that is not part of the current JDK, they are not a, they are not called as a Bojo class. Right? Now I can say that if Bojo class can be defined just by checking if the class is extending or implementing just by checking the class is implementing to the 
Java library or any other external library? Answer is if it is extending only to the Java library, it is called as Pojo. It is extending, or let me add implementing also. Implementing the to third party library or any external library. It is called as on Pojo or it is not a Pojo class. Pojo class. Right? And there is a we have uh, a condition. I mean there is some exceptional cases. Right? We will discuss that exceptional cases tomorrow. But let me ask you another question. So we have designed Java bean class, right? Java bean class is there. Why Java bean class? You can call Java bean class as a Pojo class. Called as Pojo class. Why it is called as Pojo class? Because Java bean class is extending only Java libraries. So it implements at worst case it is going to implement what serializable interface serializable interface is part of java library that's why it is called as Pojo class it is following some uh, conventions and some uh, standards if you look at all the standards it's following the uh, like all the standards can be developed just by using java development just by using java libraries it's not going to implement or extend to any other external library. That's why Java Bean class is also called as Pojo class. But not all Pojo classes are called as Java Bean class. We will discuss this tomorrow. Right? Today I have consumed a lot of time. We will discuss these things tomorrow. I hope this is making sense. Tomorrow it will be a little more interesting. After two classes, we will start developing our Spring application. We will also understand about what are Spring containers. Right? So by you can learn a lot when we design the first spring application.